Adoma mitiasi Emuna miki kameho Emuna miye matinina O oh, Adom 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 dia minya Adoma mitiasi Emuna miki kameho Emuna mi yemadina. We thank God for another opportunity to share His word, and I want you to stay put, and I want you to listen very attentively, because I believe that this morning some grace from the throne of God is coming to you wherever you are, and I believe that something you have been confused about, God is going to give you direction through the hearing of his word. And your life is going to be transformed. I believe that somebody bound will be loose. Somebody imprisoned by the devil will be loose by the hearing of the word of God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to share with you today on the team I have entitled the Ephraimic grace the Ephraimic grace the kind of grace that has the power or the spirit of Ephraim hallelujah this is a very special grace in the Bible that I want us to tap into today so prepare your heart prepare your mind as we get ready to tap into this grace this day i believe in such a time as this that coronavirus has taken over the whole world i hear london is going back into full lockdown and some other countries like denmark are also in lockdown again as we speak but i want you to know that in spite of these kind of challenge that the world is facing there is grace there is grace for you somebody say amen i want us to open our bible to the book of genesis chapter 41 and the verse 51 and 52 then we shall read the verse 50 so read the verse 51 and 52 before we read the verse 50 let's hear the word of god genesis 41 51 and 52. Let's hear the word of God. And Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh. For he said, For God, he said, has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. 52. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my, my affliction. Verse 50. And unto Joseph was born two sons before the years of famine came. With Asena, the daughter of Pontifera, priest of On, bear unto him. Amen. All right. I repeat verse 52. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. What a statement. God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Ladies and gentlemen, this passage seems to tell us that it is possible to be fruitful even in affliction. It is possible to be fruitful even in times of trouble. It is possible to be blessed in the midst of calamity. This is what this passage is about. And I'm here to assure you 
who say your life is over and everything has ended, I want you to know there is the possibility of fruitfulness in the situation that you find yourself. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that as you listen to this word, the power of God will penetrate into you, turning situations around, causing you to be blessed, even in the midst of trouble. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to read something from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5 and the verse 14. The Bible said, Wherefore he said, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Awake, you who is sleeping, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. An interesting passage. He said, Awake, and arise from the dead. He did not say that God is coming to wake you up from the dead. Or from the situation but he's instructing yourself to wake up from your death situation or deadness so that Christ will give you light wake up yes wake up and see the light that is about to shine on you there is light awaiting to shine on you if you will wake up he said arise from the dead and christ shall give thee light so the light that christ gives is already waiting for somebody who will be willing to rise from the dead hallelujah wake up and see the light that is about to shine who God has called to shine in your life. The light that God has called to shine in your life. That light is Jesus. Hallelujah. Awake from the coma of religion. Awake and start living and imparting the world around you. I said awake from religion. Awake and start imparting the world around you. Somebody is saying, Apostle, you do not know my situation. For if you know my situation, you will not be telling me that I have what it takes to impart the world around me. But I am here to let you know, no matter how dry, how afflicting, how troubling, how stormy your situation is, there is grace for you. To impart the world around you. Hallelujah. And that grace is what I want us to assess this morning. I want us to assess this special grace that God has prepared for you and I. You might not feel like one who God wants you to be blessed. Or you might not even feel like the way God wants you to feel. Or you might not feel like somebody who can make impact or affect lives. But I want you to know that there is grace in you to impact the world. And that grace is what I am here this morning to help draw out of you. Hallelujah. 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 There is some grace that is about to gush out. Of somebody to impact the world around you in Jesus name but one thing is important as a child of God you are destined to be great it is important to know it it is important to accept it that as a child of God you are destined to be great so there is no child of God destined to be little destined to be small Every child of God is destined to be great because there is the gene of greatness in you. There is the gene of greatness in you. I repeat, there is the gene of greatness in you. 
And it is high time you begin to see yourself that way. Before Jesus was buried, he told them, when you bury me, I will rise up. He knew what was in him. He knew that the grace to rise from the dead is right inside of him. He knew that the power to overcome death was right inside of him. And I want you to know, it doesn't matter how dead your ministry is. It doesn't matter how dead your marriage is. It doesn't matter how dead your relationship is. It doesn't matter how dead your finances are. And it doesn't matter how dead your family has become. There is grace in you to cause life. Oh, hallelujah. There is grace to rise from the dead. You can rise again. Hey, you can rise again. You can rise again. You can have life again. Hallelujah. You are destined for greatness. You need to see. You need to see past your challenges. You need to see past your situations. You need to see past your limitations and your weaknesses. To see the possibility of what the grace of God can accomplish with you. You need to see past your situation and see the grace of God and the anointing of God and its work that it can accomplish in you. See past the situation. See past the trouble. See beyond the storm. See beyond the confusion. See, child of God, see beyond the pain. I want you to begin to see healing beyond the pain. Joy beyond the sorrow. Lifting up beyond the falling. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be destiny minded to be able to see like that. You have to be destiny minded to be able to see like that. All the great men in the Bible who succeeded were not men who lived a life without challenge. In fact, their challenges are more than what we face today. But they were men of destiny. They were men who became great because they were destiny-minded. They became great because they were destiny-minded. Consider Abraham. He became great because he was destiny-minded. Consider Joseph. Great because of destiny-mindedness. Consider Moses. Great because of destiny-minded. What about Joshua? Great and powerful because of destiny-mindedness. And I will not speak and leave out David. Yes, David. Great because the man was destiny-minded. Hallelujah. I want you to focus on all that Christ has placed inside you rather than your position on earth now. All that Christ has placed inside you rather than your situation now. If you can look deep into you considering what Jesus has deposited in you and that which you carry you will realize suddenly that the situation that surrounds you will look so small to overcome. It is because most at times we look at the struggle around and we forget about the grace inside of us. We forget about the anointing that we carry and we look at the trouble around and that is the reason why the devil has succeeded in keeping us where he is. But this morning, as you listen to my voice, I want you to turn your focus to the things, the grace, the anointing, the power that Jesus has placed inside of you. What you carry can open every door. What you carry can break every yoke. What you carry can loose every band. What you carry can open every prison door. 
what you carry can turn dry ground into a fertile land. What you carry can break every chain and shackle of the enemy. So stand your focus back inside where Christ is in your spirit. Hallelujah. Don't be like others who God anointed and blessed, but they refuse to be loosed. God anointed them. God blessed them. Their season of breakthrough came, but they refused to be loosed because they kept thinking, perceiving, behaving the same way they were behaving before, even when their time of breakthrough has come. This day, I want you to be loose. I want you to say yourself to yourself, I'm loosed. I'm free. I'm released in the name of Jesus. What does it mean to lose? In the Bible, to lose means to be set free from one's former life and sent out to accomplish an ordained mission or goal. To be loose is to set free from your former situation and then sent out to accomplish an ordained mission or goal. What it means is that God has a mission, God has a goal for everybody. There is a purpose for every child of God. And that purpose, you can accomplish it should you begin to look inside. So, why Ephraim? Somebody will ask. Apostle, you mentioned Ephraim. Why Ephraim? Remember what we read from the book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 52, that Ephraim, Joseph said, means that God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Let's look at Ephraim, who's supposed to be fruitful, and his situation from the book of Hosea, chapter 13, and the verse 13. The prophet Hosea, or Hosea 13 and 13. The Bible said, The sorrow of a traveling woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. When you jump up, to verse 12, the Bible said, The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up, his sin is hid. Ephraim's sin, Ephraim's iniquity, is that when the time for traveling and bringing forth came, Ephraim refused to come forth. He refused to come forth. When birth pangs signaled, it was time to be born, Ephraim. It was time for you to shine, child of God. It was time for you to break through, child of God. Ephraim, some version says, being stupid, refused to come out of the womb. Ephraim refused to come out of the womb. Yet it was time for him to break through. That is what a lot of us are doing around this time. Considering the economy, considering the government, I wish it is my political party that is in power. And because it is not my party that is in power, I am not sure there is any way my business is going to flourish or I would get one contract or the other. But I am here to let you know God's time is the best. And in his time, he makes all things beautiful. The Bible considers Ephraim's refusal to come forth, to break out, to shine, to resurrect, to come up at the time he was supposed to. His refusal to come up was considered an iniquity. When you refuse to shine, when you are supposed to shine, that is iniquity. When you refuse to preach where you are supposed to preach, that is iniquity. 
when you refuse to succeed when it is time to succeed that is iniquity when it is time to win souls and you refuse to do it that is iniquity if they refuse to come out but today may you not be like Ephraim as the Lord opens the passage for somebody to shine out for somebody to break through may you jump out in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus when the passage into life when the passage into blessing was opened up Ephraim refused to show up the passage into life was opened but he refused to show up what do you think about that would you come out and shine would you step out and be counted will you step out and fulfill destiny or you remain seated counting your troubles the songwriter did not say count your troubles the songwriter says count your blessings and today I want you to go that line count your blessings you are created you are gifted and you have been anointed to make a difference what are you waiting for what are you waiting for a time is coming and the time is now that people will see the blessing of God on the people of God I say a time is coming and the time is now that people will see the blessing of God on his people Let's look at the scripture from the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 21 to 23, the last three verses. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people are strong nations. Many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the sketch of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Amen. A time is coming that all will see those who belong to God. They will testify and say, we have seen that the Lord is with you. Because in the midst of chaos, in the midst of affliction, they will still be bearing fruit. Hallelujah. Now I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that whatever is not making you see the fruitfulness that God has ordained for you be removed out of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever is making people see you as nothing, may that curse be broken in Jesus' name. Don't draw back when destiny is calling. Don't draw back whatever is making you go backward instead of forward in this time when destiny is calling. I pray that you will overcome in the name of Jesus. Ephraim. Ephraim. Ephraim means fruitfulness. Ephraim means fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is also the other name for Bethlehem. So the other name for Bethlehem is fruitfulness. Bethlehem also means house of bread. And the other meaning is fruitfulness. 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 In the book of Micah, Bethlehem was called Ephrata. Ephrata, which also means fruitfulness. Joseph said, the Lord has made me fruitful in the land 
of my affliction. The Lord has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. I don't know which land you find yourself now, but once again, I want you to know that you can be fruitful in that land. Is it stony? Is it bad? Is it troubling? You can still prosper in that land. What does affliction mean? What does affliction mean? Jo for Joseph to say, I have flourished. I have been fruitful in, my in the land of my affliction. What was he trying to say? Before we get there, let's open our Bible to the book of Psalms. Psalm 105, verse 17 and verse 18. The Bible said, And he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetish. He was laid in iron. This is a description of how Joseph suffered. A description of the man in affliction. Sold. Sold. So he was a slave. He was not even a free man who was suffering. If you are not a slave, as I'm talking now, then your situation is better than Joseph because he was a slave. But if you are not a slave, then your situation is far, far better than that of Joseph. Even Joseph, who was sold, became fruitful. Then you, who have not been sold, will be fruitful. And if by adventure, you have been sold out in the spirit realm to some demons for distraction, this morning, Jesus Christ is coming right where you are to redeem you from that prison in the name of Jesus. Affliction. Joseph said, I'm fruitful even in my afflicted land. What is affliction? Affliction is a state of pain. Affliction is a state of distress or grief. Distress or grief. Misery or suffering. Are you getting it? This is affliction. A state of pain. A state of distress. Are you in some state of distress? Joseph said, in the midst of distress, I prospered. Mm. Are you in the state of some grief? Grieving over some losses in your life. Have you lost your money? Have you lost a loved one? Have you lost somebody you were hoping that would be your helper? Have you even lost your sponsor? Listen to me. You can still be fruitful as long as you trust in Jesus. The other definition of affliction is to cause bodily or mental pain. To cause bodily or mental pain. So Joseph is saying, I was going through a situation that was hurting my body and that was hurting my mind. My mind was so hurt. I do not know whether I'm thinking straight or not. But even in the midst of that kind of situation, the Lord made me fruitful. Think about it. So that the mental pain you have is not a sign that your situation is over or that your life is over. Affliction means calamity, sickness, loss, or persecution. Affliction is equal to mishappenings or misfortune. Whatever you lay hand to gets destroyed. And whatever investments you make, you don't get any dividends out of them. You end up losing every seed you plant. But I'm here to let you know that there is the possibility of fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Affliction means unfavorable occurrences. Unfavorable occurrence. Affliction. It includes emotional effects. Where emotionally, 
you are not stable. Emotionally, you are troubled. Ladies and gentlemen, affliction also means to have inferiority complex. To feel that you are nothing. To feel that you are nobody. To feel that this is how my life is. As for me, I'm supposed to be poor. As for me, I'm supposed to die. As for me, I'm not supposed to have anything good. I'm here to let you know this afternoon that that thought is not of the Lord. That was how Ephraim thought. So the Bible said the door and the way to life was open. He refused to go, to go out. He refused to step out. He refused to succeed. He refused to break through. And so the Lord considered what he did as iniquity or as sin. Listen to me this afternoon. It is your time to break through. And there is this grace called the Ephraimic grace that will move you from the back to the front. Do you realize that in the day that Jacob was blessing his children, when, when Joseph brought Ephraim and Manasseh for Jacob to pray for them, Jacob crossed his hand and he placed his right hand on Ephraim and his left on Manasseh. Joseph told him, Daddy, not so. Manasseh is the eldest and Ephraim is the youngest. Jacob said, Son, I know what I'm doing. Why? He was moving Ephraim to his rightful place. May that grace that Jacob released that day to restore Ephraim into his rightful place, may that grace fall on you today. May you be loose from whatever as is holding you captive so that you will accomplish an ordained purpose that God has for your life. You will not remain in that bondage. As you hear me now, I pray for you in Jesus' mighty name that your life will be imparted with grace. Grace to rise from the dead. Grace to arise. And Christ shall be your light. As you listen to me, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, it will be very difficult for you to assess the grace I'm talking about. And therefore, I want to give you this opportunity to receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. For in receiving him into your life, you'll be imparted with that grace that will cause you to rise up and to shine. Rise up and to break through. If you are willing to do the same, then pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. I pray in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, come and live in my heart. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Wash away my sin and consider me as your own. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. If you prayed this prayer, that I want you to know you are actually on your way into that breakthrough you so desire. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. See you another time. God bless you. Amen.